Andrew and Marianne Heller have lived a life of faith, providing hope and inspiration to many. Andrew is a Renaissance man with a wide variety of interests, scientist, inventor, venture capitalist, entrepreneur, and musician. Mary Ann, his lifelong partner, is a breast cancer survivor. She continues to share her faith and encouragement with others. Dedicated to God's work, they are active volunteers and philanthropists. The Hellers support the community with their time and resources at organizations such as Seton Hospital, the Stanford University Hospital, St. David's Hospital, and the Dell Children's Medical Center, as well as local arts organizations, serving on the boards of the Austin Lyric Opera, the Austin Symphony Orchestra, and several other major institutions. Andrew and Mary Ann enjoy a wonderful life in Austin, Texas, and Northern California, thanks to a miracle that occurred 22 years ago. You were given a diagnosis that should have been, by all rights, a death sentence. Tell me a little bit about that. I had six different special doctors at the same time examining me before they came up with this diagnosis. And Dr. Stockdale said, Marianne, you know, you had inflammatory breast cancer and it's very serious. Yeah, the doctors were, were very clear in communicating to me that um, the chances I would still be married in a, in a year or two were very slim and that I would be raising a child alone, but they didn't want to tell Mary Ann that. So they didn't want to take away hope. Mary Ann, when you received your diagnosis of inflammatory breast cancer, your mother was with you that day at the hospital. Tell me a little bit about that day. I went in, I guess I didn't expect to get such you know, devastating news. The doctor had told me that I had inflammatory cancer and it didn't look good. And um, my mom said to me, just offer yourself to God, which is what I did, and he'll take care of you. Tell us a little bit about your faith and what you did when you turned control over to God. Um, one of the main things is I let him control my treatment. Um, I had the faith that he would heal me. And the whole time I was being, having my chemo, I prayed. And I, I always prayed that the cells would die and, and the Lord would cure me. And I know there were thousands of people praying for me. And so fast forward a little bit to December and they were getting ready um, to work with you on a radiation treatment. And you went to the doctor on, I think you said the 20th, and there was the tumor was there, it was a mass, they saw it. And the tumor had slowly started to shrink and they were trying to shrink it as much as they could before starting radiation so that they would have a smaller, more directed target. And then on the 28th? They were getting me ready right after New Year's to start on my radiation. And he looked at me and he looked at me and I said, what's wrong? I mean, he just scared me. He said, the lump is gone. <laughs> it was a miracle. And there was no medical explanation. No, all that was left was just, just scar tissue from the tumor. They referred to her as the statistical anomaly. Yeah, well, even the doctor said it was a miracle. As, as people enter into uh, a diagnosis of cancer, they don't know what to expect. Everyone's scared. You've got something in your body that's attacking you. You have no way to get at it. People are never the same. And, and when you have a type of cancer that can't be surgically removed, it's much worse. And so Mary Ann has spent a lot of time with cancer patients. Mary Ann, how do you share the hope that was given to you through your faith with people who are diagnosed with breast cancer or any kind of cancer? I just tell them you know, that I'm a survivor and told them a little bit about myself and that I would like to help. When I had cancer, every time they gave me a treatment, I prayed the whole time. And I would just, you know, offer the cancer up to the Lord and, um, and ask him, you know, to please free me from, from this disease. And I tell the people that I help to do the same thing. I said, and every time you get butterflies in your stomach, just say the Lord's Prayer. I said, it doesn't matter what religion you are, everyone knows the Lord's Prayer. And by the time you finish the Lord's Prayer, the butterflies go away. And, and that's, it really does work. Andrew um, said a prayer and made a promise to God. Tell me about that prayer and, and what that promise meant to you. One of the things that I made a promise when Mary Ann was, was ill was that if she got better, not only would I help in, with what I could from, from our money in, in uh, cancer research and in helping in medical things, but 
also that I would do what I could to try to make use use whatever skills God had given me. And and and, and my voice is something that you know it, it came. It, it didn't come because I went out and and did something. It came because it was a God-given gift. Tell me a little bit about the choice of of going back to music and doing inspirational songs in particular as a way to help lift people up. More and more the music that I loved um, really were songs that I would call, I'm, I'm gonna call them inspirational, not gospel, but inspirational. They're songs that make people feel good. I don't like to sing anything that's not something that people can smile about or feel good about inside, whether it's the song I believe, or my friend, or tell me more, or reach out, or the impossible dream from, from uh, Men of La Mancha. These are all songs that help us remember the good things. A surgeon calls up and says, you know, I like your music, it, it makes me feel good, and I play it in surgery now every day. I, I play uh, the, the album, I Believe in Angels. I believe for every drop of rain that falls, a flower grows. I believe that somewhere in the darkest night, a candle glows. I believe for everyone who goes astray, someone will come to show the way. I believe, I believe. I believe above the storm the smallest prayer will still be heard. I believe that someone in the great somewhere hears every 